So here's a sound that anybody that's got a car with drum brakes has heard at one time or another. Right. Time to adjust them. So I know this is going to be like for you old timers, like I was doing this when I was nine years old. It's, why, are you, why are you wasting the time? There's so many people who are just coming into the old car hobby and really have no experience with drum brakes or, or their care and maintenance that a video like this is useful to a lot of people. So symptoms of needing a brake adjustment. Pedal travel. The pedal will go further than it's supposed to because the brakes have worn and the, a lot of that pedal travel is just taking up the space you know, from the wear and making contact. A pull. If you've got a car like this one that has front drums, you'll step on the brakes and the car will want to pull one way or the other. It means that one wheel needs more of an adjustment than the other. That's one of the things that's tricky about front drum brakes is that they really have to be adjusted and function pretty much even for the car to go straight when you step on the brakes. And that's the thing. Disc brakes have that main big advantage in that they never need adjustment. They're self-adjusting all by themselves. Now, drum brakes, in theory, are also self-adjusting. Pretty much every factory drum brake setup from the late 1950s on uses some form of self-adjuster system so that you don't actually have to climb under the car and adjust them. Some odd exceptions to that rule are Chrysler muscle cars with 11-inch drum brakes from the classic era, 67, 68, 69. They have 11-inch drums, but they're not self-adjusting. You actually have to get underneath there and do the adjustment. So, but let's focus on just the common setups that you guys would come across on the typical common cars. So let's go over here and this setup that I have here is pretty much exactly what's on this car now. And this is the typical Chrysler drum brake setup, front and rear, all through the 60s and into the 70s actually into the 80s, into the 80s. So, your wheel cylinder, your shoes, the star wheel, which is where your adjustment takes place, and then this gizmo right here, this cable and this lever. This is the self-adjuster assembly. Now, self-adjuster assemblies work great on paper, but in reality, no. They generally, unless everything is exactly perfect and exactly so, they won't do their job you'll actually have to go under there and make your adjustments yourself. So just because your car has self-adjusters on it does not mean that they're working. And they can, they can fail, and not even fail, they could just not function for like way too many reasons to mention. But they have to be exactly perfect to do their job. So here's how it works. So the wheel cylinder up here spreads the shoes, and the shoes grab the drum. That's what slows the car down. As this wears, the shoes need to, you got to take up the slack on them. Otherwise, every time you step on the brakes, the wheel cylinder is forcing fluid in and pushing the shoes out to make up for the wear. And that's that squeaky noise that you hear. The squeaky noise when you need an adjustment is actually the shoes scraping against the backing plate. These are points that are supposed to be lubricated. We used to use like white lube on them. There's like a few, a few points on the back of the shoe that contact the pad. They just slide back and forth. And that's the squeaking that you're hearing when a drum system needs adjustment. So this is the Chrysler setup with this cable and this paw. Ford has a very similar one with a cable and it has a, a triangulated gizmo with a spring that's, that's a real pain in the butt to work with. And then most General Motors cars had a steel, a metal pole, no cable like this, no setup like this. It had a, a metal pole that would grab the star wheel and it would make the adjustments. So in theory now, how this works is that when you step on the brakes backwards, going in reverse, what's supposed to happen is this whole assembly shifts. If I could, if I could do it here like this. Okay, it'll shift. The more wear there is, the more shift there's going to be. And when the shift becomes enough, in theory, this 
hole is supposed to contact a tooth on the star adjuster and bring it up a notch like that. And that's how it gradually makes its own self-adjusting or self-adjustments. All right. But now clearly on our car, we need to adjust it. We can hear the squeak and we can feel the difference in the pedal. The pedal goes a good third of the way down before it grabs. So now what we need to do is get in there. Let's forget about the fact that the self-adjusters aren't doing what they're supposed to do. We have to get underneath there and manually adjust the star wheel. So, on different cars, this is done in different ways. Most of the General Motors cars that you come across from the 60s, the 70s, the 80s that have drums in the rear, the adjustment is made from the drum, from the front. So you have to make the adjustment with the wheel off the car. And you'll get in there with a brake spoon. Now, I, I don't have a brake spoon anymore because I haven't touched anything but these brakes, these Chrysler brakes, in 15, 18 years. So I don't have a spoon anymore. Instead, I use a screwdriver because these brakes adjust well from behind with just a simple screwdriver. You're just gonna have to figure out what device you need on yours. On some of them, so on here, these are our access points to get at the adjuster. So we would put our screwdriver through or our brake spoon through the back side and manipulate the adjuster like so. And as we're doing this, we're pushing the brakes apart and making the adjustment that our self adjuster failed to make. The way you judge, oh wait, let me back up, let me back up. On these Chryslers, these access points here are usually fitted with a rubber plug and that's just to keep water out, water and dirt and whatnot. So you pop the rubber plug out and then put your brake spoon or your screwdriver in there and make your adjustment and then you put your rubber plugs back in. Some of them, and it just depends on the, the make and the year and, and whatnot, some of them have access points that aren't punched through. Don't know why they did that, but you'll actually have to get in there and, and break it out in order to make your adjustments. Again, like I said, some of them, I, I can't picture the year. I know you guys in the comments will, will know right away. Yeah, my car has that. I gotta punch the thing out to get to the brake adjustment. But at any rate, that's how you make your adjustment. Now, how do you know you've made the right adjustment? You have to be able to spin the wheel at the same time that you're doing this. Now on one of those cars that have the access from the drum, from the front that you don't have the wheel on the car, it's a little trickier. But on most cars that have this style self adjuster, what you would do is climb under the car, like so, and spin the wheel. And you see the wheel spins relatively freely. I have, I can hear some drag. All right. It's not completely round. It's not enough to make the brake pulsate or grab, but it's not completely round the drum. So now I'm going to take my screwdriver, go in from behind, and start turning the star wheel. And you can hear it clicking. And as I'm doing that, I'm going to turn the wheel. A little more, a little more, okay, right there. So you see now I'm turning the wheel and you can hear it and it's not just free rolling. Now that little bit of drag will work itself out over a couple of miles. What you're doing is you're just taking the, the fuzz and the, and the dirt that's generally on the shoe and now it's now it's tight between the shoe and the drum so it'll make a little bit of a noise at first but within let's say 15 miles 20 miles or so it'll generally go away but that is the proper adjustment you want to have just light drag when you turn the wheel and it's very important when you do this now when you go to the other side of this car you want to duplicate that amount of drag 
because if you don't, what will happen is when you step on the brakes, the one, the side with the tighter adjustment is obviously going to want to grab harder and it will steer the car. So it's important when you do the front brakes, if you've got front drums, it's important that that adjustment is even side to side. Now what happens if you go too far? See, one of the problems is with, with the self-adjuster is that even if they're not working, they'll keep the star wheel from turning the other way. They'll allow you to turn it the one way where it'll go click, click, click. But if you go to try to turn it the other way, the pole will grab the, the teeth on the star wheel and prevent it from going backwards. So if you over adjust, I'll show you what to do. Okay, so spinning it this way will give us a tightening adjustment. If we want to loosen it, it's this, the teeth are going to grab this pole. So what you do is you take a smaller screwdriver, and you're going to, this is going to take a little, a little finagling. You take a smaller screwdriver and you stick it in through the back. You find the pole. The pole is always going to be springy. It's always going to have, have, have a springy feel to it. So once you've gotten the pole pushed back. Hang on, I'm trying to do this with two hands here. Once the pole is back, you can get your other screwdriver in there and turn it in the reverse direction to back your adjustment off. So basically you're taking this screwdriver and pushing this out and then using your other screwdriver or brake spoon which you should be using and using that to turn the adjustment in a loosening direction now that is a very helpful thing a lot of times you'll get a car that's been sitting for you know 10 20 30 years and the brakes are like locked because the drum will have surface rust on it and it won't want to release so one of the ways you can free that up and get the car moving again is to is exactly what i showed you now get a small screwdriver behind push the pole out of the way, and then rotate the self-adjuster to loosen it, and then you should be able to roll the car. And it also works when there's a little bit of a, a, a ridge, when the, uh, when, the, when the shoes dig into the drum and they create a little bit of a ridge and you can't get the drum off, that's how you, you loosen the brakes enough to get the drum off. So, that's the fronts. The fronts are very critical. The rears, same thing, you want, to, you want them adjusted exactly the same. It won't pull or anything like that, but you will have one side that's grabbier than the other. If you like to do a lot of brake stands, you know, power braking, burnouts and stuff like that, well, it's the back wheels that are going to wear the most. And if it's a race car or, you know, the kind of car that always does burnouts, you know, anytime you take it to the track or whatever it is and you do a burnout, then leave your rear adjustment on the loose side so that they're just kind of freewheeling because the tighter the adjustment, the more grabbed it's gonna be. You'll give up like, you know, a half inch of pedal travel, but in the meantime, you won't be overheating and possibly cracking your, your shoes when you go to do a burnout. Simple, archaic stuff. Like this, this is really, this is, this is like 19th century technology, but it works and there's, um, the vast majority of cars, older cars that we deal with, even if they have discs on the front, they'll still have drums on the rear. And that's like right up, right up to like the early 2000s. So that's a, a fairly comprehensive, fairly universal explanation of brake adjustment and the systems that work. And I hope you got something out of that and I'll see you tomorrow.